The original Warthog base was state-of-the-art at release, but has since been overtaken and vastly outclassed by more modern, ball-bearing based spring and cam gimbals. Thrustmaster has finally released an upgraded base called the AVA. Let's see if it lives up to the expectations. Thrustmaster sent me a review unit with no strings attached. Let's see what's inside the box. We have a USB-C to A cable, some Allen keys, springs, deflection masks, and the base itself. It still features the old connector, so all Thrustmaster grips will fit. On the front, there's a USB-C port and a status LED, and on the bottom, we find some mounting holes. An F18 grip also arrived with the package, but I'll review that in a separate video. Now, here are the deflection masks. They come in different sizes, with the one allowing the most deflection already pre-installed. These masks are great for reducing the base's deflection, which is especially useful if you're using an extension. The longer your extension, the greater the range of motion becomes, which can eventually make the stick harder to operate comfortably. The deflection masks help manage this by limiting the range of motion to a more reasonable and manageable level. Next we have the cams. There are two types, aero and jet. The aero cam provides smoother, more gradual resistance, while the jet cam offers more progressive resistance. We also get three different types of springs, soft, medium and hard, and two different allen keys to open up the gimbal and to adjust it. And last but not least, here's the AVA desktop plate. It comes in a well-cushioned box along with screws to mount the base. It's quite heavy and the overall quality is also quite good. The anti-slip pads are rather hard than soft, which means they work well on wood but might encounter issues on a glass table. The overall first impression is quite good, but what's really important is what's inside the housing. So let's open up the base. What we have here is a well-engineered full metal cam and spring gimbal. All parts are precisely crafted and I couldn't find any burrs or sharp edges. The components are easily accessible, giving a maintenance-friendly impression. The mechanism operates very smoothly. Moving the X-axis engages the entire gimbal. There also are spring pretensioners, allowing you to adjust the gimbal's overall resistance even from the outside without opening it up. They also come in handy when swapping springs. Simply loosen them completely, remove the old spring and snap in the new one. Then slightly tighten the pretensioners and you're done. Switching out the cams is just as easy. I couldn't find anything to complain about during my testing. The gimbal performs on par with the best in its class, regardless of the brand. Precision is top notch, the overall engineering is impressive and I had a great time flying with the AVA. Its sensors of course are contactless, so the overall precision is superb, especially around the center point. But there's a catch, or rather some. What the AVA doesn't ship with are adjustable clutches. This means at the moment you can't optimize the base for rotary wing simulations by removing the springs and tightening the clutches. Thrustmaster has hinted at future accessories for the AVA base, including adjustable dampers and cyclical brakes as part of the expanding ecosystem. However, as far as I'm aware, there's no release date yet. While these expansions can be delivered later, there's one thing I can't quite understand. The plastic housing. The base plate of the gimbal is made of solid metal, but the rest just looks like it. Which really surprises me, because they're competing with brands that offer full metal housings. Also, due to the design of the AVA base, rotating the grip for ergonomic adjustments isn't possible, which can be a drawback for certain setups. To resolve this, you'll need to buy an offset adapter that allows the grip to be angled for a more natural position. Without the adapter, long sessions might feel uncomfortable in center-mounted configurations. So what's the bottom line? In my opinion, the AVA's biggest challenge is its price. It currently ranges between 260 and 280 euros, making it as expensive or more costly than the Verpal Warbird D. Verpal's solution offers similar precision, but includes adjustable clutch dampers and a full metal casing. Additionally, the dampers on the Warbird D are adjustable from the outside, just like the AVA's spring pretensioners. And let's not forget about the more affordable Winwing Orion 2 base. 
While these factors are worth considering, the AVA remains a formidable base, with a clutch upgrade already in development. If Thrustmaster releases more grips, maybe including an F4 and F14 stick and civilian options, the AVA base could stand out as a unique platform, which gives us more choice in an already quite crowded market. Check out my HOTUS roundup here for a complete overview of what's available at the moment. I'll post an updated version every year around Christmas, so thanks for stopping by and see you there.